What's up, Wargamers? Welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron, and I am back again with another Battleytics analysis. Tonight, we look at the Trebuchet, uh, a time-honored classic, uh, a can of missiles, as I like to call it. Uh, so this thing, 50 tons, 1191 battle value. Uh, it's got... Uh, it's got the typical Cobra Commander helmet, although that was updated in the newest design, which, uh, by the way, I really love the new sculpt on this thing. Uh, this is another great Wave 2 uh, plastic miniature redesign. If you have not seen those, uh, definitely get your hands on some as soon as possible. Uh, but the trebuchet, again, you know, it's just, it's a trebuchet. What else could you want? It's, uh, it's 50 tons, right? 5.8 movement profile. It can pack 30 LRMs and 3 medium lasers. Um, you know, but it's, uh, it's classic. It's a Succession Wars era piece of junk. Will it stand up? I mean, we've been looking at some pretty high tech things lately. I'm very interested to see, um, how this one, you know, stacks up. I'm, I'm, I don't have high hopes for it, but I still love it. Uh, and so I'm excited to see how it does. So guys, let's take a look. All right, guys, here we are. Trebuchet technical overview, 50 tons, 1191 battle value, inner sphere medium. Uh, it's a bread and butter mech. Uh, so this thing was built in 2799. Fun fact, this was uh, debuted as the TBT 3C uh, in the Star League before uh, Kerensky, you know, took off and ditched the inner sphere like a pansy. Uh, so... <laughs> This thing, the original variant, right? The 3C had like Case and Artemis and, and all sorts of good stuff, Endo Steel. Um, but then as technology took a hit, uh, Corian Enterprises decide to, decided to basically create the 5N, which is the one we all know and love. Um, just two basic LRM 15s, uh, two medium lasers in the right arm, one in the left arm, uh, and standard everything else. Standard fusion engine, standard armor, right? Standard end steel. This is your this is your succession wars era tech. Um, I mentioned it moves 5'8, which is good, right? I mean it's a 50 tonner, so that's kind of what you would what you would expect. Um, it's faster than like a Centurion, but you know, on par with like a crab, a griffin, a wolverine, all of those types of mechs. Um, so it can keep up with with most mechs in a, you know, in your your average medium lance. Um, eight tons of armor. It's got an armor factor of 127, so it's 75% coverage. What scares me about the armor coverage uh, is not necessarily the armor coverage, but the way the criticals are set up in this thing. Um, and we'll talk about that when we get to the defensive analysis, but this thing really could um, trade a medium laser for another ton of armor exclusively on those side torsos, um, but... You know, that's just me. Um, in terms of the service history on this thing, fun fact, this particular variant persists all the way into the Dark Age and beyond. Like the Capellans use it, Free Worlds League uses it, the um, the Commonwealth, uh, Lyran Commonwealth uses it. So it, it's around. It's around forever. It's here to stay, guys. Bad news. Um, but there are a lot of upgraded variants uh, of the Trebuchet out there as well. Um, one final note on the armament. So we talked about what's there, but ammo wise, it's got eight rounds feeding each of the LRM 15s. So in my opinion, you know, that's a little bit low. Um, you know, again, that's just like the LRM 15 falls in this weird, this weird spot where like, I think 16 is probably too many. Um, but eight's probably not enough. I would probably add a third ton for two launchers so that you get 12 shots each. I think that carries you through most games. Um, but because it has eight, you know, you can dump the rounds, um, you know, out early, get all your missile ammo down range and then close in and use your medium lasers to clean up. Um, but we'll talk about all that stuff. Why don't we dive into the offensive analysis first? All right, guys. So offensive benchmarks, let's check them out. Ooh, man. I feel like you can do more damage, like just punching your opponent to death with this mech than actually shooting it. Um, it's pretty abysmal, but that's, that's the, that's what we love about the Succession Wars era. Um, things survive because nothing really does damage. 
So the Redline ACD uh, is awful. Obviously, this thing can build up a ton of heat. Look at that heat curve, uh, you know, right around turn six. So when those medium lasers come into play and you're still firing your LRM-15s, uh, it's pretty It's pretty impressive. Uh, you, <laughs> you can basically shut the thing down in like two turns. It's pretty great. Um, if you try to optimize it, you can't get much. I mean, I, you know, there's there's really not much to say. I mean, you can you can push the mech here and there, but but really you're not getting much out of it. You're increasing it by by a half a percent. Um, I don't know. So you know, there's not not much to be said here on the offensive side. The trebuchet, I think, can do some damage, um, but it's really not the type of mech that you should depend on um, to do a lot of damage. But let's take a look at the lethality index. So it only killed a javelin, a javelin, 56.1% of the time. Um, it generated a little bit above average on terms of the criticals. Damage per hit was pretty bad, 4.8. Again, that's it's due to the clusters of the missiles, right? Um, and then also the medium lasers are at a 5, so they probably pulled it up a little bit. Time to kill was 11.84. That's like, it's really bad. 3.5% um, was engine kills, which means... It did three full engine criticals to the center torso because this is just a javelin. So just let that marinate for a minute. So three and a half percent of the time you destroyed the thing with engine criticals um, before you were able to just core it out. I mean, I don't know. Um, it, I guess it sort of got that shotgun effect with, the, you know, 30 LRMs swarming in on you. I'm not blown away, uh, but, you know. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting to be blown away by this thing. Uh, you know, it does what it does. Let's take a look at the defense. Um, we can laugh about it together, and then we can go on to efficiency. So let's take a look at that. Oh, poor Trebuchet. I feel so bad for it. Um, so survivability was 52.8%. So bad. Uh, just, just really abysmal. Uh, and so many, so many ammo deaths. 32.4%. <laughs> 32.4% of the time. That's like one in three times, right? Um, it, it dies uh, from from an ammo kill. Only 13.8% of the time it was actually cored out and killed. Um, like if I was an engineer in Corian Enterprises and I was like running some simulations on my new design, I'd be like, hmm, we should probably do something about that. But nope, they're like, sell it, sell it now. <laughs> It's crazy. All right, so armor diagnostic. Let's take a look. So the arms are under, again, rear torso way over armored. I wanna, I gotta, I gotta go to the the numbers here. Um, it has twenty four freaking pips across the three sections in the rear. Like why? Why would you do that? Uh, I mean, especially with a mech with so many LRMs. And the, meanwhile, the, the freaking side torsos have eleven pips, guys. That has more internal structure than it does armor. Okay, so I made a mistake um, on the rear armor. It's not 24, it's 17. I don't know, I think I added the CT in there twice, but uh, regardless, this thing needs a lot of help on those side torsos. It's probably more than, more than just armor reallocation can solve. I mean, I think you need to add another ton to this thing um, or reallocate criticals, something. Uh, but the way it is currently laid out, it is, it's, it's total madness. Um, anyway, so the thing dies a lot. The mobility analysis, it takes 8.6, 8.6% of the time it's taking a light critical. Um, you know, it's taking a hit. And you can see in this particular mech, uh, the mobility analysis, it starts at a 3, right, because it's a 5.8. It drops to 1.7 at the end of the defensive simulation, um, you know, so if it if it makes it to that, you know, it's at 1.7. On average, across the 12 turns, the thing's carrying a 2.7 um, target mod, so that's not terrible. But there's definitely late game degradation if this thing's even still alive. Um, so, I don't know. We already laughed about the ammo deaths. Let's laugh about it some more. So here's the problem. Um, if you get into the left torso there is a 100% chance you will hit ammo. It's the like, worst design in the world. Um, and the left torso is protected by 11 pips. So if you, if you get hit with a PPC in the left torso, you should run um, because the next shot is going to basically detonate your ammo. 
um, you know, more likely than not. So, you know, that's just, that's just bad mech design. Um, and then, you know, on the right torso, you're at a 25% chance. There's three other things in there and an ammo bin. Even that makes me nervous, but the left torso, um, I mean, that's just, that's just poor design. And you can see that reflected, um, in the ammo deaths there. Um, so that's a defensive simulation. Now the thing is only 1100 battle value, 1200 battle value. So let's see what the efficiency looks like. Um, I'm not optimistic, but we'll see. So we saw that survivability drop, right? 52.8%. That, that means you also have a drop in damage, right? So we look at effective ACD, which is essentially the optimized ACD multiplied by survivability. Um, and that's a 16% loss, um, which is pretty bad. So uh, that affects the mech quite a bit. The efficiency rating ends up being 5.97. Um, you know, it's it's not it's not the worst we've seen. It's about average. Um, it certainly could be a lot worse. And for a mech that dies as much as it does, I'm actually surprised it isn't worse. But um, it is it is pretty inexpensive. Um, so let's look at the let's look at the gunnery sensitivity. So this thing has a has a pretty good slope, 0.725. So that means, you know, basically the more you invest in this mech. Um, the better it's going to do. The crossover point appears to be gunnery one. Um, you know, once you get past gunnery one, you're not really seeing too much in terms of return on investment. Um, you know, gunnery two, I think, is is where you have to, at a minimum, play this mech to get those LRMs in play. That's where you're dealing most of your damage. If you run this thing in, you're just using three medium lasers because I hope to God that you've dumped your LRM ammo um, or you've used it all because otherwise you're just uh, you're just suicidal. Um, but yeah, so that's the trebuchet in a nutshell. I mean, I think you know from from a damage perspective, it's a 50 tonner in the Succession Wars era. You know, 100 points isn't it's not terrible, right? I mean, if you think about mechs like the um, the Griffin and the I want to go look it up on Battlelytics. I don't. I don't remember what variant it is off the top of my head. Is it the one? I think the one N is the one that uh, is that the Succession Wars era one that has the uh, the just the LRM on it and the um, and the the PPC. Right. Let's take a look. And I, I am right. Uh, it is the one N. So that thing had um, an ACD of seventy seven point three. So for as as a point of reference, right? And then Griff, Griffin's five uh, five tons more, but um, you know the battle value is very similar. It's twelve seventy two, um, but the the optimized ACD was seventy seven point three. The efficiency rating on that was four point zero two. So again, we've been talking a lot about ill clan era, clan max, clan invasion era max. This thing is like succession wars era. It's gonna suck. Um, but 5.97, you know, not too bad for that era. In that era, I see everything from, you know, all the way down at the zeros, less than, you know, less than one to about, you know, seven and a half. Um, there's a couple maybe that, that get close to eight. Um, but I don't think you see anything that's, that's too much higher than that on the, um, you know, on the inner sphere side. So, okay, let's talk about roles and let's talk about where I think I might play this mech. Okay, roll evaluation on the trebuchet, the TBT 5N, uh, there are there are three places I would play this mech. First one is a defender. Uh, so you're, you're camping an objective, you know, you're kind of moving around, um, you know, you're trying to keep that, that target mod up when you can, but ultimately, you know, you're using your LRMs, um, you know, to basically soften targets up, and then when they get close to the objective, Hopefully you're low enough on ammo or out of ammo, you know, that you can in fact um, use, you know, those medium lasers and be safe with it. Um, you know, fun tactical fact. In classic Battletech, when you have an ammo bin um, for, you know, an AC-20 or an LRM-15 or whatever it is, and you have multiple of those weapons, you do not need to draw from any specific bucket. So what I'm trying to say is in this mech, always use the ammo in your left torso first. You know, have both launchers feed off that one. So in four turns, that thing is tapped out. And then you can move into the ammo in the right torso because that has a lower probability of getting hit. Little little pro tip there. 
Um, okay, so the defender role, that's good. Fire support role, same deal, um, except you're going to be a little bit more mobile, and you're hoping that your bigger friends, um, you know, maybe your Wolverines uh, or your Marauders or things like that that are playing a forward Vanguard style role um, are taking the fire and you're not um, freeing you up to just kind of move or stand still and lay some fire down range. Um, the last is a second line mech. This is probably between, you know, the three roles, this is probably going to be the most common. That's where you hang in the back, you use your LRMs, um, and then, you know, your plan is as soon as those, those hoppers are dry or near dry, um, you know, you're charging in and getting those medium lasers into the mechs. I think, you know, you would see that the survivability on this mech is going to be a lot higher once your ammunition is out of the equation. Um, the only question is, are your arms still going to be attached to your body? Uh, because as, <laughs> as we said, this thing does have a bit of uh, an armor problem. So that, of course, is the big question. Now, in terms of the um, the threat assessment, I mean, it's not crazy, right? You, you do 30 points of damage um, up to 9 inches or 9 hexes when the medium lasers come into play. And then you can do 30. Uh, you do another, you know, basically, I'm sorry, you can do um, another another 15 on top of that. So how much of that damage is actually going to hit? You know, the, the problem with the trebuchet, the reason it has such a low um, ACD is because those LRM-15s are unreliable. It's not like you roll a hit and you deal 15 damage. It's like you roll a hit and maybe you do like seven points of damage if you're lucky. Um, you know, your average calculated damage, um, your, your best is at six inches. That's 22.5. That means if you fire everything you've got at six inches, you do a full alpha strike, you build up 10 points of heat, you're likely to do 22.5 uh, points of damage. You know, when you're at uh, long range for those LRM-15s, you know, your, your average calculated damage is something like, you know, 5.2, um, something in, in those, in, in that range. And that's for both launchers. I mean, that's like, it's abysmally low. Again, you've got to hit with them, then you've got to roll for clusters, and so on and so forth. There's no Artemis, there's nothing. Um, to me, you know, and, and I find this when I play with the Catapult too, it's a, they're very similar mechs, um, except the Catapult's got more armor. Um, you know, the Catapult, I think you get a little more mileage out of because, number one, it's got an extra medium laser. Two, it's got more armor. Three, it's got jump jets. Um, but, you know, you have the same problem. When you're at long range, if you just think that this thing's going to be able to deal damage at long range, it'll let you down. Um, so I do think that, you know, out of the three rolls, second line is where you're going to want to play this mech. Defender is probably next best. If you played in a fire support role, um, you know, I think you will be somewhat disappointed in the performance unless, you know, you've got a hot hand or you are playing a gunnery one pilot and, you know, you can, you can really rely on, on solid hits. Um, okay. That's about all I can say about the trebuchet. Would I take it? Absolutely. Um, I think it's a, again, it's like the Whitworth. It's like the catapult. It's like this class of mech where it's got LRMs and medium lasers, right? And that's their armament. I think that's good bread and butter stuff. Um, if I'm going to do like a field refit or a modification to this thing, I would consider dropping one or both of the launchers to LRM 10s, adding more armor, maybe adding another medium laser um, or upgrading one of the medium lasers to a large. I'm not sure. I'd have to play with it and see. Um, but, you know, it just it, it feels like ah, there's just not enough armor. They put, you know, again, this, this it almost feels like a clan mech, right? Like sort of that glass cannon type of feel, except for it's just like it's like a like a glass water pistol um, because it just doesn't do the same type of damage that the clan mechs do, obviously. Um, but anyway, so that's the trebuchet. Um, love it or hate it, there it is, the trench bucket. A um, couple of things. Number one, guys, subscribe. Uh, if you have not subscribed, please do so. If you have subscribed, thank you. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment either way. I want to hear what you think about the trebuchet. I want to hear why you love it, why you hate it, what your favorite variant is. I know there's a lot of really exciting uh, trebuchet variants out there, uh, all the way out to the 3100, so some cool stuff out there um, for this particular chassis. That said, 
Aries Games and Minis if you want to buy yourself a brand new trebuchet. Uh, you can just head on over there. Aries Games and Minis, uh, Derek is great service. He's got the books, he's got the dice, he's got the minis, he's got everything you need. Cases, uh, decals, I've said it a million times, I'll say it again. Uh, some of the best service on the internet, so definitely check that out. Definitely worth your time. Um, but that's it, guys. I'm all done. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, this throwback battle uh, battleetics review. Uh, looking at uh, looking at a classic here, the the trebuchet. It certainly was interesting to look at this after looking at some of those really high powered variants um, that we've been diving into. Um, like that Crusader and some of those other crazy ones, just so much damage. Um, speaking of which, next up, I'm going to spoil, I'm going to give you a little little, little preview, not a full spoiler, but we have a fan favorite. Uh, I think everybody's been asking for the, for the one that's coming up next, uh, and it is a monstrosity. It is a monstrosity. I'm going to leave it at that. So guys, stay tuned. As you know, always great stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming. Have a great night.